this is another one of those cases like, oh my God, a teenager who's disgruntled, who's actually, as you'll see as the trial goes on, that her her stepfather and her mother actually care about her and disciplining her. But she, nah. She she doesn't she doesn't want to be disciplined. She wants to do whatever she wants to do. So let's get a little bit of background, and then we're going to see uh, the opening statements of Kathleen White Newman. It's the prosecution prosecuting attorney in this case. And this article is uh, was posted April eighteenth, twenty twenty four. And the headline is, 14-year-old looked like she had seen a demon after shooting her mother in the face and then inviting a friend over to show off the victim's body. The investigator testifies. She is clearly disturbed. Not only, and look, you're going to find out in the evidence as the trial unfolds, that they tried to get her help. They tried to take her and, and get her counseling and, and this thing and stuff like that. Now, here on the right is Carly. Now, she's 15 now, but at the time of the incident, she was 14 years old. And this is her beautiful mother on the left that Carly shot in the face. The shooting death at the home of a Mississippi high school math teacher and mother already appeared to be a particularly gris grisly case as soon as the victim's 14-year-old daughter was identified as the suspect and charged as an adult with murder. But a Rankin County Sheriff's Office investigator has since testified that Carly Gregg shot 40-year-old Ashley Smiley twice in the face, invited a friend over to show off the victim's body by claiming there was an emergency. So she she played she played the girl. She didn't really tell her. The girl her friend didn't know why she was coming over. Played with her dogs in the mean in the meanwhile, and then told the friend there were Two for the head, one for the chest, waiting for Greg's stepfather, too. So she shot her mother, and she was waiting for her stepfather to come home to shoot him. The preliminary hearing before Rankin County Judge David Murrow was posted online in full by Jackson Jambalaya, and the details from the proceedings were startling. Investigator Zachary Cotton took the stand and spoke about how Ashley Smiley, a Northwest Rankin High School teacher once honored as Teacher of the Month, went to her daughter's room after 4 p.m. on March 19th and took some items out of the bedroom before Greg opened fire three times, shooting her mother twice in the face and once in the chin. I'm going to link this article in the description. I just wanted to get a little brief uh Low down. Now, they both rode to school together. You're going to hear the prosecuting attorney outline a lot of this that's in this article. But I wanted you to see a picture of her mother and what Carly, what she looked like at the time. I mean, she still pretty much looks the same. She's only a year older. But uh, just getting a little background of this tragedy. A tragic, tragic case. Prosecuting attorney Kathleen White Newman is going to be giving the opening statements into Carly Gregg's murder trial. And this is a good, uh, good audio. Um... Another one I had found was terrible. Like the first couple of minutes of the opening statements were, were really bad, and I believe it was on court TV. But I found this one on Long Crime, and uh, here we go. This is a case about Carly Madison Gregg. Carly Gregg 
has been charged with murdering her mother, Ashley Smiley, and attempting to murder her stepfather, Heath Smiley. She's also been charged with tampering with physical evidence for removing a camera and hiding it that captured a portion of the events. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll hear testimony throughout the next few days during this case. You'll hear about some secret life that Carly lived. You'll hear that Carly had a secret boyfriend. You'll hear that Carly had a secret iPod, that she had secret social media accounts that she was using to communicate with people on this iPod when her parents had taken her phone away. You'll hear that she was secretly cutting on her thigh using a, a knife. You'll hear that she secretly had burner phones, phones her mom and stepdad didn't know about that she was using. You'll hear that she had secret weed vape pens and that she was secretly smoking those vape pens and getting high before going to school at times. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not why we're here though. We're here because of what she did on March the 19th, 2024. We expect that you'll hear that Carly is the daughter of Ashley Smiley, the stepdaughter of Heath Smiley, that Heath and Ashley were married sometime in 2022. I'm sorry, 2020. You'll hear that Carly's, Carly's biological father had not been in her life for about a year or more, that he was a known drug user, had violent and angry tendencies. You'll hear that back in January, Carly got in trouble with her parents when they found this iPod, that they got onto her for, for using these secret accounts and for communicating with people. You'll hear that around the same time that she had this boyfriend they found out about and that they asked her to break up with him and that later uh, they found out she was still seeing this boy. You'll hear at some point that Carly got in trouble uh, at school she was cheating. She'd found the answers to a test and, and gave them to the other students. You'll hear that all of this was happening about the same time that they found out Carly was cutting on her legs. You'll hear that as a concerned parent, what they did was they got Carly in therapy. She was being treated for anxiety and stress. You'll hear that she continued smoking those vape pens, even after in therapy. So now, now I wanna take you to the real reason we're here and what you'll hear. We're here because on March the 19th, 2024, Carly rode to school with her mother that day. Ashley was a school teacher at Northwest Rankin, taught geometry. Carly was in the 10th grade. You'll hear that that morning, she got in a little altercation with one of her friends, cussed him out. But what you'll hear, ladies and gentlemen, from the, from the testimony of this, this friend is that he was so worried, so worried about Carly's use of smoking marijuana and so worried about her being high and so worried about her having these burner phones that her mom didn't know about that he felt, he felt compelled to tell Miss Ashley Smiley that day. Ladies and gentlemen, after the incident with Carly that morning, he, you'll hear that, that he gets in touch with another friend and he's like, hey, you gotta keep her distracted so I can go tell Miss Smiley what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, this friend cared about Carly. He was like, I, I, gotta, I gotta intervene, I gotta tell her. I'm afraid of what's happening. You'll hear from him that he did in fact tell Miss Smiley. That after fourth block that day, he goes and he tells Miss Smiley, hey, hey, Carly has got these vapes. She's got this phone. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll hear then that Carly Gregg rides in the car home with her mother from school to their house. They leave school sometime after 3.30. They get home a little before 4. You'll hear that when they get inside the house, it's only their two dogs, Ashley Smiley and Carly Gregg. Immediately, Carly goes and lets the dogs out. You'll hear testimony that Ashley then goes into Carly's room. You'll hear that while Ashley is in her room, that Carly's still outside. At some point, Ashley finds uh, what law enforcement believe to be the four boxes that contain vape pens. Testimony will be that we believe she carried them from Carly's room to her bedroom, went back to search in Carly's room. The evidence will show that 
almost immediately upon Carly coming inside the house that she walks straight to her parents' bedroom, that she goes straight to her mom's side of the bed and removes a 357 Magnum from under the mattress. We believe the testimony will be that then she concealed that 357 Magnum behind her back as she walked through the kitchen. She peeks her head around. We believe the testimony will show that she peeks her head around the kitchen to make sure that her mom hasn't come out of her bedroom. We believe the evidence will then show that she walked with that 357 Magnum behind her back, walked in to her own bedroom, and then three, fired three shots into her mother, killing her. We believe the testimony will then be at that very moment after she shot and killed her mother, she then hides that gun back out of the camera, walks back into that kitchen, sits down on a stool with a gun behind her, picks up her mother's cell phone, puts her mom's passcode into the phone. We believe the testimony will be that then she texts her stepdad and said something to the effect of, when will you be home, honey? Testimony will be that then she waited for him to respond. I'll be a little bit longer. She sends him a thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe the testimony will then be that after she puts the phone back down and walks out of sight with the camera, that between the next 45 minutes or so, that the defendant reaches out to or attempts to reach out to about five or six of her friends. Some were FaceTime, some were text messages. We believe the evidence will show that during this time, she was asking them all for help, trying to get them to come over to her house. She wouldn't tell them why. We believe that one of them's gonna say he even offered to call 911 and she told him no. The evidence will also be that one of these friends did in fact come over to help Carly that day. She didn't know why, but she knew that her friend needed help and she went to that home. We believe the evidence will show that when that friend arrived at Carly's house, that Carly walked to the front door, asked her, are you squeamish around dead bodies? We believe the evidence will show that then she took that friend and showed her her dead mother laying on the floor. We believe the evidence will show that after that, she says, I put three in my mom and I got three more waiting for my stepdad when he gets home. We believe the evidence will show that then she tells this friend, hey, why don't you go wait outside in the backyard? My stepdad's about to be home. This friend will testify that she does go in the backyard and she hears gunshots. And the next thing she sees is Carly coming out of the back door we believe the testimony will be that she fell out of the back, she fell down coming out of the back door, gets up and tells her to run. And these two individuals, this friend and Carly, jump over the fence and run separate directions. You'll hear testimony uh, that there was a 911 call. You'll hear a frantic Heath Smiley telling the dispatcher Oh my God, she's killed her mother. She hit me in the neck, it grazed me. She tried to kill me too, run off. You'll hear from law enforcement when they arrived on the scene that Carly Gregg had fled the scene. You'll hear from law enforcement that when they arrived on the scene, Ashley Smiley was very much dead in the floor in Carly's bedroom and that they found that Heath Smiley had been shot and hit in the shoulder, a through and through. You're, you will hear from law enforcement that sometime after the day of the event, they learned that there was cameras involved, that this home had surveillance video. You'll learn that one of those videos was turned over by the living victim, Heath Smiley, and it shows Carly Gregg and her friend jumping over the fence. And then you'll learn that there was another camera in the house on March the 19th, 2024. That camera was in the kitchen and that's the camera that Carly was hiding the gun out of sight of. 
and you'll hear that that camera was not in the kitchen when law enforcement got there and it was not in the kitchen where it should have been when Heath Smiley got there. It wasn't until some time later that that camera was discovered. Ladies and gentlemen, you will hear that Ashley Smiley's calls of death, gunshot wounds to the head. Ashley Smiley's manner of death, homicide. You will hear that Heath Smiley says, Carly Gregg is the one that shot at me. And on his 911 call, he said that she tried to kill him. You'll hear him say that he did not move that camera, the only other person living in the home. Ladies and gentlemen, you also hear from forensic scientists from the Mississippi Forensics Laboratory. You'll hear that both of Carly Gregg's hands tested positive for gunshot residue, both the right and the left. You'll hear that the 357 Magnum that was used to kill her mother and shoot her stepfather, they took swabs. They took a swab of the trigger and they took a swab of the hammer. And you're, you will hear that the DNA profile that matches those swabs belongs to Carly Gregg. Ladies and gentlemen, you will also hear that there were two projectiles removed from Carly Gregg's mother, Ashley Smiley. One in her brain, one in her neck and that those projectiles were tested with ballistics and that those projectiles matched the 357 Magnum that Heath Smiley took out of Carly Gregg's hand that day on March the 19th, 2024. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of this trial, after you've heard the evidence, the state will stand before you and we will ask that you find Carly Gregg guilty of murder, attempted murder, and tampering with physical evidence. Thank you, and then Carly, jump out on the kitchen to make sure I'm gonna get a screenshot of Carly there you go well there you have it I mean she did a fairly decent job laying out the 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 story I mean we all love a prosecution that has massive passion right if you love trials uh, this one was I don't know. Rank it in the description below. I mean, in the in the in the comment section. Rank it. What do you think? I give it a five. But she's talking facts, and we have video footage of everything she described. I'm gonna do another follow up of the closing arguments where. I don't know, guys. I haven't watched the closing arguments yet. Now, the trial started on Monday on the 16th, and today is now the 19th, and I'm playing catch-up. But uh, I'm going to try to cover as much as I can of it. I did the Boy in the Box trial. You can go look at that. But you know what this reminds me of is um, the Spanish teacher murders, where the two boys... I guess they were like 15, 14, 15, 16 years old. Two of them, uh, like they stalked her. They knew she took walks every day at the park. And then they, they, they got her and they, they obviously they killed her and tried to hide her body. Uh, and then they took pictures. They, uh, one of them called or, uh, either they called or they took pictures made comments about it which obviously it led to their 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 capture and conviction and they were both found guilty but i have i have some videos of them if you're interested in that trial you can check the uh playlist for trials uh but what reminds me of it is is the psychiatrist that uh testified in that case talked about i guess we're going to call it a teenager brain a teen brain. I mean, before you're 25, your your frontal lobe, whatever, doesn't fully develop, so you make bad decisions, or you don't have a shut off. Obviously, we all make bad decisions. Let me rephrase that. Uh, you, you don't have like a a shut off mechanism. Uh, uh, emergency brakes. Your emergency brakes aren't working. So clearly, Carly planned this. All right, so this is kind of what the psychiatrist was talking about in the other one, that these, these boys planned to kill the Spanish teacher 
But guess what they didn't do? They didn't plan on what's going to happen after we do it. What's going to happen the next day? What's going to happen five years down the road? What's going to happen if I get caught? Is this a good idea? And guys, the only reason why the boy wanted her dead is because she was failing him in Spanish. It's insane. Why did Carly kill her mother? I'm going to assume because Carly wasn't going to be able to do what Carly wanted to do. Now, Carly planned. Oh, so she, the mother comes home, some kid calls and says, yeah, uh, she's got stuff in her room. She's still been vaping. She's still smoking dope. She's still doing this, that, because the boy's concerned about her. The mother goes in the room where you'll see testimony uh, where she goes in the room. She finds a box of vapes. And then, okay, Carly just says, probably in her head, I'm going to solve the problem. And the problem is my parents <coughs> interfering with what I want to do. But without no further regard of what is the consequences for my actions. Obviously, she doesn't realize she gets caught, she's busted, which she's a, a complete idiot anyway, right? There's cameras. How is she going to get away with murder? She doesn't think like that. She's not thinking like that. She's just thinking, eliminate the problem that's in her way. So then she, you know, she goes and does this, but without thinking, I'm going to be charged as an adult. I'm going to serve most of my life in prison. Now, I don't know how much time. I don't know. I haven't looked up, uh, which we'll get to that, I guess. Um, what is she looking at? Um, I'm still diving into this. I still need to do the uh, defense closing arguments. But, I'm right, are you curious, too, of what time is she looking at if she's found guilty? Now, she's 15 now. It happened when she was 14. She is clearly disturbed. She's cutting her legs. She's doing drugs. She's disobeying her parents. She's got all the classic signs of uh, a, a disturbed child. Something's wrong. Something's clearly wrong. She She's upset. She can't see her boyfriend. They, they, they forbid it, but she's still seeing the, the kid again. Um... But this was premeditated. She thought it through. She hid the camera. There's so much damning evidence to her that she, they can't say that she is insane because she did rational steps, hiding the camera. She's hiding the gun behind her back, walking through, hiding the gun. But then again, this is what teenagers do. This is what the kid did in the uh, Spanish teacher murder. Is he takes pictures. And he talks about it. What does she do? She calls her friend to come over. Like, what is her friend going to do? Does she, in her mind, wanting her friend to be complicit with her in this and that her friend's going to protect her or be with her or she doesn't feel alone. It's all psychological. And it is fascinating. Um, my heart goes out to the family and the father. I will be playing the 911 call um, in another video. I'm going to do a segment of these. But it is just tragic. It is just a tragic, tragic case. And uh, by all appearances, her mother was a sweet woman and did not need, did not deserve to be killed by her own daughter.